to the Tower Tower of Babel. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that God, when he chastises his people, or chastised people for doing something wrong that were sinning, he would always confuse their language. <clears throat> or put them in a place that they didn't understand the language. So think of that. Whenever somebody was sinning against God, he either, Tower of Babel changed the language, made it so confusing they couldn't understand one another, or he would put them in captivity in a land where they didn't know the language. So every time people were sinning, the Jews were sinning, they were always put in a place of unknown language. So I want you to repeat it after me. Every time, and, I, and I'll tell you where to repeat, every time that God's people sinned, against him. He put them in a land of, now repeat, uh, unknown, unknown language. language. Hmm. And we're going to get to that. We're going to read a little bit. It says, and the whole earth was of one language. Just think if no one ever sent, we'd all be, everyone in the whole world be speaking the same language today. But you can, you can blame our forefathers why we have different languages all around the world. Not that it's bad that we have them, but it's because of sin that we have different languages. So the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said, one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top, top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, a lot of people thought that building the tower was sin. That wasn't the sin. Okay, everyone listening? Building the tower wasn't sin. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men building. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They have all one language, and this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So go, go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. I know. I know, and I don't know a thing they're saying. <laughs> so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because... The Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So the reason for building the tower was, it says that the tower of Babel was built by people who were rebelling against God by directly contradicting his command. Well, one of his command was to Noah, God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, 
and replenish the earth. He didn't mean replenish it in one spot. Okay, he meant to replenish all the earth. Well, they knew that. The ones that built the, the tower knew that. God wanted them to replenish all the earth, not in one spot. But this is what they said. The purpose of building a tower was to make a name for themselves and to prevent them from being dispersed from over the face of the whole earth. And that's where you see in Genesis 11, 4, and they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. That's what God told him to do. Go and replenish the whole earth. And so by building a city to not be dispersed and a tower to make a name for themselves, the people of Babel were defying God. The tower wasn't the sin. They made buildings later on. That's not a sin. Defying God is when he tells you to do something and you don't do it, that's sin. And he had given them a command of what to do. And remember, what did he do when they sinned against him? They spoke in unknown language, language to each other. Unknown. And of course, the languages we have around today is because of the Tower of Babel. Now, God continues to make confusion of language. And, and probably what a lot of people don't understand is, is that not just the Tower of Babel, but all through the Old Testament, every time the Jews would sin against God and God got tired of it, he would put them captivity in a land where they didn't know the language. Again, unknown language. For sin. Sin, they heard unknown language for sin. Every time. All through the Old Testament. You've got to remember that this is, God is trying to teach them to quit sinning against them. How does he do it? One of the things was an unknown language. Made confusion. <laughs> so when God had picked Abraham and his lineage to be his people, God through Moses had warned the Israelites that if they sinned against his commandments, he would put them into captivity where they did not understand their language. See, sin is darkness. Righteousness is light. <clears throat> Unknown is darkness. Unknown language is darkness. It shows sin. But understandable language is light. Are we going somewhere with this? Keep listening. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. What does that mean? When God put them in captivity in a land where they didn't know the language, the sign was, that was a sign from God, that you were sinning. So them speaking a language they didn't know was a sign from God that they were sinning. Even when God put the Israelites into captivity and they were in a country they did not understand the language, they still did not repent of their sin. Deuteronomy 28, 49, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth. And swept of the eagle flyeth, the nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Again, and again, and again, unknown, language of the unknown, 
is because of sin. sin. Not because of righteousness. Because of sin. Now there's other scriptures that we have that says the same thing. In Isaiah 28, 11, For with stammering lips and, and other tongues will he speak to his people. Trying to tell them that they need to repent. They're in a land. They don't understand the language. Another scripture in Jeremiah, Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far. O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation. A nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. Punishment. Unknown. Darkness. When God punishes his people, he puts you where you don't understand the language. It's unknown. Woo! Are you guys listening? God has always, through the whole Bible, continuously, made confusion with an unknown language when they were sinning. Not when they were doing right, when they were sinning. Every time the children of Israel sinned against God, God sent them away in captivity and a language they did not understand. This was a sign. See, Jews needed a sign. This was a sign for them to know, you're sinning, wake up, smell the roses. You're sinning. Do you understand what they're saying? No, nope, you're sinning. <laughs> it's a sign. Now let's read with the Holy Scriptures of what Paul said. Paul's talking to a Corinthian church who has no idea what in the world how to do tongues. They have no idea. You gotta remember they in Corinthians they worshiped. They tried to worship Jesus how they worshiped their idols before. How do we know this? Well, we're going to get to that. But Paul says this, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe. <laughs> are people getting this? Did the, the, is there churches out there getting this? Tongues is not to them that believe. Are we getting this? <laughs> Black and white. Almost every virgin says that. But to them that believe not. For sinners. All through the Bible, you sinned. You were put in a place where you didn't understand the language. It was unknown to you. This should never, ever happen in a church, something unknown. Otherwise, you're sinning. <coughs> but prophesying serves not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Prophesying is for the church. Tongues wasn't for the church. Ooh, isn't that the... Tongues was for the sinner. Tongues was given unknown language, was given when they were sinning. Not when they were not sinning, when they were sinning. I'll through the Bible. Wow. Are we hearing that? When Pentecost had come in Acts, and they all were speaking in languages of where the Jews had been taken in captivity, 
it was a sign unto them that they were in sin. That they needed to repent. Peter's call, talking in all the languages of the land of where they were put in captivity. It was a sign to the Jews. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's speaking the language of where we were sent and put in captivity. We were sinners. Yep. You were sinners. And you refused to come to. See, God opened the doors for them to come to Jerusalem and live. Do you know that they refused? And they wanted to stay in those lands? They were sinning. So when the, at Pentecost, the apostles spoke in all those different languages, showing the sign to the people, the Jews, they were in sin. Wake up! Repent! Isn't that amazing? Now, there's something very important a lot of people forget. <laughs> Peter was not talking something unknown. Because he's a believer, right? And he wants believers. He's, not, he's speaking something they all understand. Even though it's a different language, they all understand it. At Pentecost, nothing was spoken that was not understood. There's no such thing as unknown. You know, in the Bible, the translators used unknown and, and they put it in italics. And it's in italics because uh, they put that in there trying to make it more complete and more understandable. But it lets you know that they put it in there. It's not in the original translation. There is no such thing as what we call unknown language for God. God is not darkness. God is light. Has God ever come to you and spoke to you and, and you didn't know a word he said? Even the angels when they came to the people in the Old Testament, no matter what happened, they didn't speak to them in any different language than what they understood. Because God is light. He is not darkness. Who does God do? God doesn't want people. He makes it so they can't hear and they can't see when they don't want him. They're in they don't want him, so that's what he does. He puts them in darkness. But he never puts people in darkness that are believers. It says, now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. See, when, when God is in it, and it's for the right cause, for the right thing, it, everyone understands. There's no darkness. There's no confusion. Then, when Peter went to Cornelius, the Gentile, he's in a, of the Italian band, his group received language too. Do you know that they understood it perfectly well? It wasn't unknown. It was known. And this is what it said. It says, and they could circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also were poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So they heard them magnify God in a language they understood because they knew they were magnifying God. <laughs> Always, nothing is unknown when God is done correctly with God. God is not darkness. Never has been. And never will be. Nothing had ever been spoken without understanding until the Corinthian church. See, in Corinthians, that's the Corinthian church. They, they became Christians, but man, they had idols all over the place before they became Christians. And they served those idols 
in a particular way. And what happened was, is that Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians telling them how you're worshiping Jesus is wrong. Wrong. <laughs> so, when a scripture tells you what you should do, do you go against the scripture? That's why the scripture is there, isn't it? So that we can read it and understand and do what the scripture says. So it says, without understanding, nothing had ever been spoken without understanding to the Corinthian church, which tried to worship Jesus in the same manner they worshiped their worldly gods, their idols. So we see Paul addressing how they worship their idols. This is what he first says in the first part of the chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. <laughs> Who's he talking to? The ones that are using certain things incorrectly. <clears throat> he said, do you know you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols? So he let them know how they worship the idols. It's not correct. I'm, he's going to correct them how to worship Jesus. So then Paul goes on to explain the difference in how we worship Jesus. Paul explains the different gifts and administrations by the same Spirit. But that not everyone receives the same gift. Paul also explains how prophecy is better than how the Corinthian church tried to make tongues the most important. See, the Corinthian church tried to make tongues an important thing. And Paul's going, what in the world are you doing? Tongues is for the sinner. It's not for the church. It's not for the believers. Okay. Now, if you receive, when they went and prayed for them to receive languages and the starting the church, it's because most everything was written in Hebrew for the Gentile church. And they needed to be able, and the songs were written in Hebrew. And the gospel hadn't even been written or get, uh, given to them by Paul and Luke and Mark and Matthew and uh, Jude. None, none of it had been written yet to give to them. So they were using the scriptures of the Old Testament to prove the gospel of why Jesus had come and died on the cross, shed his blood, and rose again using the scrolls of the Jewish church. They needed to know Hebrew. Paul explains how prophecy is better than how the Corinthian church tried to make tongues the most important. Paul also had explained to the Corinthian church that everything spoken should be understood. If you speak something, you have to understand it, otherwise it's incorrect. You're doing it wrong. He said, uh, should be understood by those they are with, that nothing should be spoken that is not understood, including prayers. In 1 Corinthians 14, 9, this is some of the things that Paul said. Except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, <clears throat> how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak in the air. What is it then? What is it? What's my conclusion? Paul's saying, this is my conclusion of what you do as a church. This is my conclusion. Are you listening to what I am telling you by the Holy Spirit? This is my conclusion. I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding. What? You mean that's in the Bible? Yes. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. 1 Corinthians 14, 19, Paul goes, I had rather speak five words with my understanding 
He's speaking this by the Holy Ghost. This is our commandment by Paul to the churches who want to speak something unknown. He said, don't you do it. That's for the sinner. You start speaking unknown, that's for the sinner. He said, I'd rather speak five words in my understanding than by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. This is Paul teaching us what we should do. All scripture is for correction. Remember, unknown languages is used against the Jews for sin. Language easy to understand is for the believers. What language do you speak? Easy to understand or unknown? Do you think everyone around you are sinners? <laughs> it, it's amazing how people can take the doctrine of man and try to make it a doctrine of God when the Bible clearly talks against it. We need to read the Bible. We need to prove what we do by the Word of God. And if you can't prove it, or if you have scripture that contradicts another scripture, you have to know you're not interpreting it correctly. Because all scripture goes together like a glove. And what I've told you today, there's not a scripture interpreted correctly that will go against what I just told you. Yeah. Not one. They all go together. Just like a glove. God of Jesus is good. I hope you learned something about the Tower of Babel. And what God did to his people that sinned against him always used language as a confusion. Always made it unknown. 